So what is a transistor? Well, simply put, a transistor is a gate or switch that regulates the flow of electrical current. On this diagram, you can see that a transistor consists of a gate, a base, an emitter represented by E, and a collector represented by C. When a small voltage, let's say 7 volts, or 0.7 volts, is applied to the gate, current is allowed to flow through the transistor. This is the one state, and the direction depends on the dopamine of the transistor, which we will get into later. When no voltage is applied to the gate, no current can flow through the transistor. This is the zero state. In order to understand how this works, we must first delve into the molecular structure of semiconductors which compose transistors. This primary semiconductor, silicon, is an element consisting of 14 protons and neutrons, 14 of each, in its nucleus, and 14 electrons orbiting it. Of these 14 electrons, 4 electrons exist in the outermost shell. These are called valence electrons. When silicon bonds with itself, as in the diagram on the left, these four valence electrons form a tetrahedral crystal lattice among the other silicon atoms, much like carbon. This tetrahedral bond is very stable, and it is the reason why silicon does not conduct electricity well on its own, as there are no free electrons to move around the crystal lattice. To remedy this, silicon is modified in a process called doping, in which other elements are introduced to the crystal lattice. There are two types of doping, p-doping and n-doping. P-doped silicon has an element with three valence electrons, such as boron, interspersed throughout the lattice. This creates holes, like this, where a, that can either move or have electrons fill them. These holes are positively charged compared to electrons, and which are negatively charged, hence the P. Keep in mind, however, that the overall charge of the crystal lattice is neutral, as the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Similarly, n silicon has an element with five electrons, such as phosphorus, interspersed throughout the lattice. This creates, a, this creates free electrons that can move through the crystal lattice, thus enhancing the conductivity of silicon. Again, while the n stands for negatively charged, the charge as a whole is neutral. So how does doping allow a transistor to function? Well, in a bipolar junction transistor, particularly this NPN transistor shown here, a p-doped layer is sandwiched between two n-doped layers, the emitter and the collector. At each junction, charges begin to fuse across the border. This creates what is called a depletion layer, which acts as a barrier and prevents the flow of electrons across from the emitter to the collector. However, when a small voltage is applied to the base, the depletion layer shrinks. This allows the flow of electrons through the transistor from the emitter to the collector. Keep in mind that this is electron flow. So in an NPN transistor, electrons flow from the emitter to the collector while conventional current flows from the collector to the emitter. This is inverted when you, we are talking about an APNP transistor. One thing to note is that because the flow of electricity through the transistor is much higher than that to the base, transistors can also be used to amplify a signal. That is all for today, and I hope to see you next time.